Amen. God said what he said. Amen. That's what this generation would say. I said what I said. Well, God said what he said. Amen. And his promises, they are sure this morning. And this morning, I'm just going to encourage our hearts with reminding us of what the Lord has said in his word, what he has promised us as his children. Romans 4, verse 16. And I've got two versions here. He says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith, of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Um, the complete Jewish says at the beginning part of the scripture, I'm going to read just negative up to the last line. It says, the reason the promise is based on trusting is so that it may come as God's free gift a promise that can be relied on by all the seed, not only those who live within the framework of the law or the Torah, but also those with the kind of trust Abraham had. Okay, and obviously saying here in, in the Jewish uh, version, who is father of us all in a different translation. Um, the first, this first scripture we have here is telling us that the promises of God are free. It's not something we can work for. It's not something that um, we can earn. And that the whole purpose of us having to get the promises of God by faith is for this reason. So that people would know it's God's free gift. It's not to do uh, with the works of a man. God made promises. And we are blessed, the Bible says, with faithful Abraham if we take God at his word. That's what separates Abraham from every other um, man of God in the word. He, he was not a Jew. He was the man that first responded. And the way that he received salvation, the way that he was delivered, is the same way that we get delivered by the hearing of faith. We hear God's word. We say, yes, we respond. I'll follow you. Do I know all the answers? No. Do I know where God is taking me? No. But he made me a promise. Abraham was made a promise that through him, all the families of the earth would be blessed but the first thing he had to do was jump over a big hurdle and that big hurdle was to get up out of the place where you are and go to a land that i'm going to show you i want you to be encouraged that the promises of god are sure but many times they come with a, with a big test at the beginning there's a requirement for a leap of faith there's a requirement for you to do something that maybe nobody in your generation has done before and to take a step that you haven't seen anybody else take Yes, God's promises are sure, but Abraham has to get up and go. Maybe that's some of us this morning. Don't be afraid of what you're being asked to do, especially if you have a promise. <laughs> if you have a promise from the Lord, get up and do it. You know, the thing about Abraham is that he was made a promise that would be beyond his lifetime. A promise that would be beyond his generation. He, he was promised things that he would never see. Through you, all the families of the earth will bless your seed will be multiplied like the sand along the seashore. <laughs> Some of us, we, our minds are so short term in their thinking that we can only consider a blessing that's going to bless me now and something that's going to bless me tomorrow. What if God wants to do something in you that goes way beyond your lifetime? It's a different way of thinking. Abraham took the promise and we are blessed with faithful Abraham. If we take God at his word, the song we sang said, they're sure if you only believe. God said to Joshua, only be courageous, mm. only be strong. He said, don't let nothing else come in the way. Don't let doubt come in. Don't let unbelief, just only be strong. Only trust God. Only take him at his word. And you'll see the promise of God fulfilled to you. Second Peter 1 verse 4 says uh, that we are whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Speaking of, you know, the word that we have so far, the scriptures that we've received, they are full of exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. And we've taught on this before. It's very rich what he's saying here. But the, re the reminder here is that there are so many things that God has already said so many precious promises that he has made. And those promises allow us to partake in spiritual life. All right. All right. So they allow us to have spiritual peace, spiritual joy. And a lot of people that don't have access to that because they have, they have not accepted Christ. 
But for those of us who have accepted Christ, then, you know, we, we might not be as rich as the next man, but I shouldn't be miserable. We, we might not have all the materials of others, but I should have joy. I, by the promises of God, have access to the peace of mind that can only be afforded to believers. So right. I'm not going to stress myself out trying to catch up with the world in every material metric. I need to make sure that I have peace. <laughs> and, I, and I believe this strongly, and I'm proving this more and more. That when the believer prioritizes having divine nature, having the nature of Christ, when we prioritize trying to live good and trying to be holy, the Lord provides you all the other stuff. He provides you the things that you need. And increase can come because it's not even, it's not even on your mind. I'm, I'm not chasing it for the point of view of trying to have status. I'm not trying to be more wealthy just so I can be said I'm wealthy. That's not what it's about. I want more of Christ, and the Lord knows that, and so he's not, a, he's not afraid to bless you and increase you. But we've been given great promises about being partakers of Christ's divine nature. That's being like Jesus, having the temperament of the Savior, having the assurance of the Savior, having the trust that God will do what he said he would do. We can be partakers of that divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through us. Well, on that, 2 Peter 1:19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well, that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. This, this particular verse I'm going to come back to in the coming weeks. I'll be taking some uh, time to come back on uh, teaching on Monday, and I'll be teaching on light in dark places. Light in dark places. Other translations of this verse is so um, beautiful. It says, you know, we have we have a reliable, we have a more reliable word. You know, we have something that we can depend on. Um, we have the prophecy. We have the Holy Scriptures. The way Peter, you know, Peter in the previous verse is saying, we heard him speak on the mountain. We were there. We heard that voice that came and said, "Thou art, you know, this is my beloved son. Hear him. We heard that voice. But even having heard that voice, he says, but we have a more sure word. <laughs> yeah, we heard we heard his voice, but we've got prophecy. We've got scriptures. You know, that was great because that proves what's already written. That proves the foundation that we're standing on. We have a more reliable word. This word can't be shaken. You can't move this. Luke said we, we have infallible proofs. We have so many, so many ways to prove Jesus is who he said he was. And so I want you this morning to be encouraged to take him at his word. Go back in that word. It's Isaiah that told us, and with his stripes, we were healed. We, we saw it acted out when he, was, when he was whipped and bruised. That was the fulfillment of it. But the sure word showed us that he was going to take away sickness. He was going to take away diseases. So we take heed to that word. We read that word. We get in that word. We exhort ourselves daily with that word because that's the word that's going to prevent sin. And the deceitfulness of sin making us hard. We hold to the word of God and we stay in that word. It gives us light in dark places. Right? When we feel in dark, when we're feeling down, when we're feeling depressed, when people say there's no other solution, the word of God is a light that shines in. When doctors don't know what to do, the word of God is a light that shines in. He's that light that shines in the darkness. We'll come back to that. We look forward to teaching more on this. Hebrews 6.19 which hope we have as an anchor for the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth that within the veil. We have an anchor. We, the songwriter wrote the song off this verse. It keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows are rolling. We have a steadfast assurance that goes where? Right into the presence of God. The presence of God anchors us. The hope that we have is anchored in the presence of the Lord. And the way into God's presence has been opened up through Christ, the word of God. We now have a hope that takes us into God's presence. We have a hope that goes beyond flesh and flesh feeling. The people that go into all kinds of meditation and all types of um, chanting to try and get themselves into some kind of state, but we have an anchor that keeps our soul. We have a sure word that takes us into the presence of the Lord. David taught us, I'll enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. 
I'll go into his courts with praises. He showed us how to unlock the way into God's presence. That's why we take the time to pray. We take the time to worship before prayer. We take the time to, to sing before prayer. What are we doing? We're unlocking the door to God's presence. We're unlocking doors to utterance, to get beyond the veil, to get into the heart of where God is. God said what he said. We have an anchor that keeps our soul. Hold to God's word. Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. I just put another translation here from the complete Jewish Bible. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me unfulfilled, but it will accomplish what I intend and cause it and cause to succeed what I sent it to do. Praise God. The word of God is sure. The word of God is steadfast. It will not fall to the ground. Praise the Lord. Remember God's promise over your life. Whatever prophecy came over your life, remember that word. Be reminded and don't let your spirit be taken down by contrary information. The only information that matters is the information in front of you. The only information that matters today is the information in the word of God. Only believe. Only believe. Believe like Abraham believed. Against hope, mm -hmm. believe. Against all uh, odds, believe. When it's difficult, believe. Believe. Only believe. These all died in faith. Hold to your faith. Don't let nobody take your faith away from you. It's the one thing that we have to hold to. Because eyes can get dim and the ears and can get dull. Feet can stop walking, but your faith, never lose your faith. Hold to God's unchanging hand. All these things can pass away. We're in, a, we're in a body that was not made to be eternal. This body has a lifespan. Now, the Bible says by reason of strength. When strength runs out, this body's finished. But we have another body. <laughs> we have a building not made with hands. We have another right. temple. We have some. So, so let's not put our hope. The Bible says if our hope is only in this life, then we'd be of all, of all men the most miserable. It's okay to have heaven in view. It's okay to have one eye on your next body. This isn't it. <laughs> Our promise is not, is not to remain here forever. Our promise is not to be in this land, you know, for forever. And I don't know how long we will be here, but let us have this hope. A hope that we have another body. A hope that while I'm here, I'm in the will of God. While I'm here, God's taking care of me. While I'm here, he's in control. And my mind will not shift in its belief mm. in the steadfastness of God's word. He's in control. Right. The devil's not going to get victory. The devil's not in charge of my departure. He's not in charge of my tenure in this body. God knows the minute and the hour, the second that my spirit must leave this body. And I don't believe it's going to be a second before. It's in God's hands. My life is in the hands of God. So is your life. Believe that this morning. Live that way. As we continue to get up in the morning and put him first, before we lay down at night, we meditate on him again. Saints, that's the key to being blessed. Stay meditating, stay in the presence of God and stay holding on to his word and keep exhorting one another daily. I can't get it out of my spirit. Exhort one another daily. Encourage one another daily. Share the word daily. Right. Keep sin away. Keep sin away from our, our, our doors by continuing to exhort one another to take part of this divine nature, to manifest the nature of Christ. Amen. God bless you, saints. I just wanted to encourage you briefly on faith again and stir up your pure minds and you, things we you. know. Amen. But just to remind us to hold to God's unchanging hand. God Amen. bless you.